going on guys welcome back to another episode of the apex podcast and this is the last one of the season and we're sitting here with riley amos and uh anyways riley how are you doing man like i've had you on coffee and van chats we chatted a little bit earlier in the season um but dude you've had like a wild last half of this season like it's been pretty crazy like uh from worlds to nationals to broken collarbone to just kind of being all over the place and traveling all over the world but anyways how are you doing first off like how, how are you feeling how are things going yeah thank you for having me i'm doing well it's good to be uh back in colorado it's gonna be really great to be back in colorado springs for the apex this year but i'm doing pretty well like you said it's been a it's been a crazy season but an especially crazy second half of the season um but yeah we're just riding the wave like you said we're we're still traveling the world racing bikes and yeah it's been good yeah you're still you're still living the dream i mean for 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 what you've been going through um which it's like it's it's funny man being being an elite level cyclist every once in a while when you're having a crappy day you just kind of have to step back and go man i literally get to ride my bike for fun every day like that's what i get to do <laughs> and so you have to take that deep breath but anyways you know what was it six weeks seven weeks ago it was nationals and you crashed, unfortunately, and broke broke your collarbone. Is that correct? Yeah, I crashed on Thursday before the race on uh, Saturday, just uh, warming up kind of in the morning before I was going to go train a little bit on course. And uh, yeah, I was riding with a, with a buddy, luckily, but I just clipped a pedal in a corner on an easy trail and popped me over the bars, you know, something that I probably have done a hundred times before, but just the right hit on the shoulder it just snapped my collarbone three clean through so Jeez. yeah that put and an end to my uh, my national champs hopes but yeah no I'm, I'm lucky that i had somebody with me to help me get out and uh that i had just a great a great staff there with me to help me out at the hospital and the hospital is super great super fast and helpful and i broke it on a thursday and had surgery on a monday and was on the trainer on wednesday so jesus it was pretty <laughs> pretty awesome how how well it went and how well uh, elevate orthopedics here in durango took care of me and just the job that kane anderson did because I, I ended up getting a plate and seven screws um in my collarbone because it was broken and displaced with a pretty big piece that came off it as well so he had to bring that piece back in as well yeah um so it was a pretty pretty legit break and the fact that six days later i was spinning easy on the road on my mountain bike is pretty impressive you were outside you went outside six against days later everyone's on the road. Wishes, yes against everyone's wishes and so let's let's just take a step back because you literally you you took a chapter book and you put it into a pamphlet and just described it and so i want to go all the way back into okay the initial crash happens what's going through your mind like i mean like you're getting pulled out of the woods and you know it's probably not good has it has it clicked with you that it's yeah. like i think i've broken my collarbone no, yeah, it was instantaneous. I never had broken a collarbone before, but like I stood up from my crash. Like I, I rolled, was yeah, re relatively unscathed, but stood up and was just like my shoulder just like fell and I could just feel it instantly. Like oh, I had no man. stability, like my whole shoulder just sat. Um, and I looked down and you could see just like where one end was just poking at the skin oh. on top. So and it so, was legit. It was and, like, I and so what's, but what's going through your mind? Cause like you say it so nonchalant and it's probably because you got back in five weeks, you went to worlds, you yeah. were able to race. It looks like nothing ever happened to you, but what is going through your mind when you're sitting at the hospital and the doctor's like, yeah, dude, you have a broken collarbone. Um, no, no bueno. I mean, I was, I was pissed to be honest. Like I had kind of, re I felt like I had really started to find some good fitness the weekend before I was in Andorra and uh, came third at a world cup. And that was my first podium of the season. And I really felt like I was starting to find some good fitness again at the exact time of year. I wanted it, you know, kind of building, building into it super well. So I was, I was pretty bummed. I was pretty heartbroken. It kind of just like ripped the, you know, all season you kind of, the goal is to build, build through the season you know start you, you start slow and you build through the season to try and have a good race for nationals and most importantly the world champs you know yeah the two two biggest events that can kind of i don't know that are just like 
staple headline events you know the world the world champs is the the biggest i guess the biggest goal the biggest publicity the biggest title you know so for sure you want to be the best the in the world you want to be the best in the world yeah, so period like always yeah. the goal and just barely like a month before that to be to be sitting in the hospital like with that on question if we'll even be able to go is yeah it was hard for sure like especially because the season hadn't been this perfect stable season to begin with anyways you know so i was looking for more and i was hungry and i was yeah it was it was pretty heartbreaking for sure but uh it's just one of those things that's like you can be you can dwell on all day but at the end of the day all you can really do to to better yourself and to be in a better place mentally is to look for the positives look for what you can do and like move forward like we're always moving forward in this life but yeah you have to you have to put in the right effort you know yeah and so and so you're con and so like my thing is is like when did it click like i have this rule where it's like um i need 15 minutes like i do this thing where it's like if i have a bad event just give me 15 minutes like i'll dwell on it i'll be bummed about it i'll be pissed about it but after 15 minutes i have to let it go like it's yeah. it's done it's over with we can't change it we learn from it we move on and so but a collarbone i mean this is like nationals and now possibly worlds is off the table and so yeah. what like when did you decide like okay i'm just going to do everything in my willpower take it day by day to get to worlds um well it was hard i think i like i truly had those 15 minutes where i like let go in a sense or like just move past in a sense um kind of on the on the way back from the hospital i guess like once i got evaluated and slinged up and my mechanic was driving me back like up until that point i had been just like pretty shattered and then it was just like well it's not about me anymore like let's enjoy being here in winter park and watch some of my best friends and competitors race and like you know what i mean it's like I had moved past my race and it was just like time to time to just hang out for the weekend, you know, take yeah. a step back from racing. But uh it was really hard from a uh, from that that other perspective you're saying because like I got surgery Monday and it was like a for sure at that point, like yeah, worlds is really tight. Yeah. That's that's a really iffy maybe, you know. Yeah, and my team as well was like, yeah. I mean, I'm lucky, but my team as well was like very much not pushy at all for me to race worlds. More of like, hey, let's think about not racing worlds to just not risk it, you know. But in my well, head, the it's doctors, like, the doctors were probably telling you that if you if you crashed again, like this could this could be worse than it is. Probably, correct, right? The hard part was like when I first got surgery. Like he didn't really know. Um, it's more of like, hey, we're gonna put you back together. Um, hopefully, like that goes really well. And then it's more of like, how well do you heal? How fast do you heal? Monitoring that. So like initially, it was like completely up in there for Worlds. I literally got my plane ticket to go to France four days before I left. Wow. So. And like, so you're, and we so you're waiting. literally, you're literally battling because you're like having to have this like. Yeah okay, I need to be, I need to be ready to go, but I also need Correct. to be ready to not go. Like I need to be ready to be told that I can't go. <laughs> and so there's yeah, this like, that, that was super hard for sure. But like in my head, I was stubborn and yeah. like, I felt my progress. I felt how my body was healing. And I was like, I'm going to Wells. Like on week two, I was just like, I was, I was for sure stubborn about it. And I think that stubbornness can, it can, bite you in the ass if you're not careful but also like that stubbornness willpower i think pushed me through some good quality training while i was injured and also helped like spark that good healing with my body as well you know yeah instead of just like hiding in this sad stress hole just being like i'm going to worlds it's still on the table it's still the biggest goal let's do this yeah like i think it's good you know but i literally wasn't 100% sure I was going to Worlds until we had like a 
a final or a second checkup with my doc on a Thursday to like see how the bone healing was doing. And that was at four weeks. And then I was flying that Saturday to France to race the relay the next Wednesday. So it was like that Thursday was where the decision was made. I was going. And you're probably also communicating with USA cycling too. And so they're like, they're probably looking at this as like, Oh crap, is this a liability? You know, for can... sure. Because <laughs> like... also the, the team, like there's the individual race I mentioned, um, my individual U23 cross country race, but there's also the team relay event, which is a super, it's a big deal. Like each nation brings six riders to, to compete in the team relay. They each, each rider does one lap of the XCO course. You have one elite man and women, one U23 man and woman, and one junior man and women. Yeah. Um, and so last year we had a super good relay. Um, and I had a super strong, good lap in that relay. And so this year, you know, I'm coming in and I'm weighing the, the fact and the risk of, hey, you just got to go to Worlds. Do you crash on a Wednesday and just completely jack your individual race? Or like, is there even going to be good fitness left in the tank? And so I had actually told Jesse, Anthony ahead of time, who is going to be our, um, what do you call it? Our, our director there. Yeah, director sportive, um, liaison, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I had told him, you know, like Bjorn Riley, another U23 athlete who had just like a couple of weeks ago in snowshoe got second in the World Cup. I was like, Bjorn's riding great. Like, <clears throat> you should give him the relay spot because, like, I'm like my doctor's team, everyone is like really nervous for me to begin with. And like reducing this risk of the team relay event wouldn't be a bad thing. Um, and like Bjorn's riding super good. Like you should give him the spot. And Jesse was like, well, like you have a good point and we'll talk about it more, but I really want you to do the relay. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, I had so many people like in the ear of telling me what I should and shouldn't do. Yeah. So that, that was kind of the hardest thing, but um, I ended up feeling really good on race week and then, and Bjorn ended up not wanting to do the relay and I did the, the team relay and it went super well and we got a bronze medal. Sweet, man. No, that's cool. That's cool. And so how did your individual race go? Like, do you feel like given the circumstances, you know, and it's always a coulda, woulda, shoulda thing. I think it's like, even if you, even if you won, there's probably something you probably could have done differently, but you know, even if you got second, you're like, oh, if I would have just done X, Y, and Z, like maybe I would have zipped that Jersey up. But given the circumstances, do you think you produced a good world championship result? For sure. Like I was like the race itself I executed was like really, really good. Like there was no, I had a good start. There's no stu like stupid silly mistakes. I rode super clean start to finish. Like I feel like I paced to the best of what my body could do. Um, and yeah, it was, it was an eighth in my second year, 23. So I think it was still a really good ride, but the fact that like I did no gym after doing gym, like two to three days a week, not being able to like bring in some strength regimen for like the last month and a half or the last month up to worlds with the collarbone and just like big redu reduction to what I could ride and it being all on, on the road. Like I literally didn't ride a mountain bike until world champs week for the first time. Because you wanted to kind of protect yourself. Is that, was that kind well, of like, yeah, I, I wasn't cleared to ride a mountain bike by the doctor Yeah, because of yeah the healing process. So like based on everything and the craziness of it and what I was able to do training wise safely and the limits I pushed, you know, with the training wise, like that's for sure the best I had in me, like the field that I raced with the U23 world cup mount cross country scene is just so competitive. Like it's amazing how fast they all are and how close they all are. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, like we're nipping at the heels of the leads. Uh, and I think the guys that are going to age up are going to be right in front of the lead pack. So yeah. like, that's for sure. The, like a, a good result, you know, obviously yeah. if everything would have gone perfect, like that's not quite the result I want at worlds, but like based on everything that happened the top 10 is super solid. Like I definitely don't think I could have done it any better. So, well, that's all that matters. Right. And it's, it's really, it's, it's, it's really hard to, 
to be like, well, I left it all out on the table and gave it all I could. And this is the result I got. And so it's super cool that you can kind of, kind of, kind of see that and mature, maturely articulate, you know, it was the best that you could kind of put on the table. But anyways, with, with that being said, with world championships behind you, um, you know, the second biggest race in the world is right around the corner. It's the apex. Heck yeah. <laughs> and so you got second here last year. Um, I don't know. Have you had the chance to see the new courses and all that cool stuff that, that's kind of popped up and about? I've been checking them out a bit, but obviously I won't get to like ride them beforehand because I won't yeah. be in Colorado Springs beforehand. But it looks awesome. I'm super stoked. Yeah. So what was your, well, let, let's go ahead and get this out on the table. Cause this is like kind of been an ongoing theme with this podcast is like, what was your favorite, favorite previous course in the last podcast? We introduced the, the new, the new courses, but what's, what's your probably, what was your favorite course or stage from last year? Um, I think my favorite stage from last year was stage two, that big day where we climbed up that, that, um, that dirt road for a long time and then we ended with that super gnarly descent oh down yeah, to yeah, the yeah. Finish. I'm trying so to you go down six the... so it's uh captain it's jones park is kind of the okay. day, i think you so you go up gold camp road through old no, stage no. no no it wasn't gold camp in the jacks it wasn't that it was oh, okay do you remember i think it was stage two last year oh yeah is it rampart and rampart, yeah, it was rampart. Reservoir? And then we came down that downhill at the end. It was like 2000 foot descent and it was like super techy and rocky. And there's like yeah. a couple rock gardens that like tried to catch you off guard. And it was like, you got to the bottom of your arms were just blown. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think that would probably be rampart. It'd be cause it's super yeah. long climb up and then you do like kind of a yeah. loop and then you descend a different way. Correct. Yeah. Oh, that was yeah. it. Sweet. Yeah. Sweet. I, I love that stage. Like it was brutal, but it was like, Man, it's so fun to just roll. I think like they're a big stage with really, really tough single track at the end. Like that was so fun. Yeah, I think they're doing and something similar. The um, Apex got some super sweet pictures of that descent too. I love some of the pictures they got of a, like off some of the rock drops and stuff. Yeah, so I think this year for 2022, um, yeah, it's stage. I think it's going to be stage three. They're going to do. Uh, it's going to. I think it starts in Woodland Park though. This go around, but you do. Correct. You do the I ramp. It starts reservoir. a little different, but yeah. yeah. So you won't do the same climb again, but it's kind of similar. But uh, but yeah. So that all being said, I guess what you what are you most excited about, and what's your goals for the Apex this season? I mean, I just last year the Apex was a post world cup season like just get together with some of my best friends and like camp out together eat good food and just like enjoy taking the apex in for what it is which is an amazing tour of some really awesome riding for four days you know in a competitive environment so this year's kind of the same like i have a sweet group of buddies we're gonna um set up in an airbnb with and just like hang out and enjoy racing as part of the process you know Heck so yeah. Like that, that's what I'm excited for. It's like a vacation race. So, so do you guys, an awesome time, good do you time guys, in Colorado Springs, good food, good riding. So, yeah. Yeah. Cause there's not like a lot of eating out. Like when you're traveling, like you really try not to eat out too, too much because you kind of want the quality of food and you want, you know, save money too, even, but do you guys eat out or like, are you guys going like full camp mood uh, mode or like what, what, what are you, what are you guys going to end up doing? No, I mean, we'll eat out quite a bit probably. Yeah. Like, I think what Colorado are you shooting Springs for? Really good yeah, yeah. What's Sorry? your What's your favorite Colorado Springs go to? Do you have one, or are you just kind of honestly like I haven't whatever. spent enough time in Colorado Springs to have a go to? But yeah, yeah. All right. Well, you got to check out Trails End, and then I guess uh, uh, Odyssey is pretty good. Pretty good bites and stuff like that. Okay. But I guess past that, like, do you have a do you have a goal for the event? I mean, I guess you're a competitive guy, but I guess more or less your goal of the event is to have fun. Is what I'm hearing. For sure, which fun will be had regardless. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, it's always competitive. I'm gonna race my hardest, and we'll we'll see how it goes. Yeah. What? <laughs> we'll see what fitness is left kicking around. And so, just like, and and just going off of, uh, you know, like just going off of uh, these four days, you know, and and like you know this this stage race is kind of built for everyone. Um, 
all the way from the pro to the entry level mountain biker, just to get the experience. And, you know, for some of those new guys and some of those new people coming into the, the race, what's, what's like a recommendation that you have for them coming into their first stage race? Like you've done a few of these at this point. Um, yeah. if you could kind of give them like one tip, what, w- what would that be and why? Yeah, I think for the entry level or just average mountain biker, this stage race can look like pretty daunting on paper. Like there's some yeah. big days and I think it's, it's moved in a good direction since from last year a little bit. Um, and why do you say yeah, that? There's some big days. I think just a, a little bit less overall climbing and, and a little bit in, this year for sure compared to last year um which is good for for most people you know like yeah it's awesome when an event caters really hard to the press but i think it has to be a good mix and they hit the nail on the head this year um so i think the best advice i think i can give for a stage race you know is really pace and fuel accordingly so you know stage one Palmer park is an opportunity to kind of go all out but stage two you still have like three at the start of stage two you still have three big days ahead of you yeah. so you know starting and pacing that stage two um really just starting easy and kind of working your way through the day and really focusing on good hydration and good fuel throughout the day and especially like right after the race is going to be really key to feeling good all three of those days yeah no for sure and so is that kind of your plan is more or less like you know leave it all out there on palmer park and then more or less like manage the time gaps accordingly definitely like palmer park is i think last year it was about or just less than an hour tt for some of the top guys so like an an effort like that you can recover pretty quick from with like good uh good post race um nutrition and rest So like an effort like that, you're kind of ready to go again for day two without really losing much, um, I guess like losing much of your, of your storage tank in the sense. So yeah, all out on day one, see where it shakes up. And then, uh, then you kind of got to race for those time gaps for the rest of it. Yeah, for sure. And then, so, you know, you know, this film being said, like, you know, how old are you? You're young, man. You're still in the U23. 20. 20 years old can't even can't even have a beer legally yet (laughs) and so um and so that that all being said like what what do these next few years look like for you i mean you know you you ate the world championships this year you know second at the apex last year multiple world cup podiums like what what does next year look like are you continuing with track can you talk about some of that stuff um yeah i'm continuing with track next year um super lucky to have the support of that program for yeah. sure from such a young age like the what they have given us and me athletes from a just a support standpoint to it's a dream as a these, kid that's a dream as, races. as any cycle it's amazing like as a kid yeah. like to be sponsored by trek like that or specialized it's like it's a dream right for sure like yeah it was something i couldn't fathom just three four years ago could never yeah. even fathom it um so yeah i'm continuing with them last year but really you know, the next couple of years, the next two years specifically, my last years in under 23 category are like, okay, we've taken last year and especially this year as a big, big learning. And how do we take what we've learned to have some really good execution in the next two years, you know? Yeah. So this year was a lot of learning. I mean, this is my first year racing the full, I guess, as full as it was with everything that happened. Um, World Cup schedule all over the world. I mean, I saw seven countries this year. Wow. Racing UCI Mountain Bike World Cups. Um, so Did you get airline I learned status? a lot. Sorry? Did you hit the airline status? Yeah, I almost hit platinum in one year. Oh! Like one flight away. On what airline? On United. On United. Almost hit the platinum. Right on. So you, 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 lounging it up first class whole shebang we we're lounging it up you know we get that economy plus most of the time but yeah small flights will get that first class upgrade occasionally at the gate and have a little party but yeah (laughs) but 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 not getting it it's kind of ridiculous when you when you look back and like this last flight game back from europe was my 10th flight over over the ocean over like eight and a half hours so that's that's like so ridiculous like the amount of time on airplanes we spend is so ridiculous and i'm just 
so happy to not be on another one of those this year. I was about to say, man, I feel like I feel like that's just got to be almost borderline overwhelming. Like by the time you hit platinum, you just don't want to fly anymore anyway. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. like the oh, perks 100%. don't matter anymore. Um, and yeah, that's like this year of learning I talked about, like I learned so much about how you can optimize, you know, that that red eye massive time change flight to come out of the other side is as rested and not destroyed mentally as you can be, you know, yeah. coming into a race week from just like hardest thing for me, honestly, man, on these big travel days that are like 25 hours is like staying full, <laughs> like really? eating enough food. Yeah. Because these flights that are like nine hours long, like you get one meal service. It's like maybe like half of what a meal I eat at my house is. And then yeah. like a yogurt for breakfast. <laughs> Yeah, and, like, and, and sometimes they're not very and good. Fly with me. And that sometimes fly with my little body. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes they're not very good. Like it's not. No, exactly. It, like you're getting like a it's rough right. rubber egg, ham, cheese thing. Correct. Like, it's been nuked in an airplane microwave. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So, and so yeah, trying to like pick up just an hour or two of sleep if you can not be like hungry for four hours all that's huge detriment to your body it takes time to, to to recover from in the week it's just adding on another level of of stress on your body um so just things like that um how we execute these races because in a cross-country race it's an hour to hour like 30 max like your start is so important how you pace is so important because there's no like climb over like two minutes so how you can go so hard but also then blow up so hard just i learned yeah. so many things this year about traveling about doing this as a like a as a full-time job um just like interacting with the team and just man just so many things that i got to just like experience this year and last year but mostly this year being a part of the full factory team to carry into next year um Totally just like hit some nails really square on the head next year. So no, that's exciting. And so and so, you know, I guess it looks like continuing track shooting for the rainbow jersey is is the main goal, huh? For sure. Awesome. Someday. Someday I'd want to pull that jersey on, but you know, only only one guy can win that jersey every year. So yeah. It's a it's a amazing goal to shoot for. Yeah. No, that's, that's awesome, man. And so before we let you go, I kind of want to ask you one thing, you know, you being 20 years old and, you know, we have the likes of, you know, all kinds of different pro mountain bikers coming out of here that, have, you know, and you being in Durango too, I'm kind of interested to hear, cause there's a lot of good mountain bikers that have come out of Durango. Um, so I'm kind of interested to hear this, but, um, do you have like a mentor or a guy that you've looked up to even in the American scene that uh mountain bike wise that that you got a lot of respect for that you feel like's kind of shown you the way or helped you through and guided you a bit 100 percent, and and not just one person you know but yeah my very first coach you could say um was todd wells actually who's oh, wow. multi-time okay. mountain bike olympian lives yeah. here in Durango. and so at 16 he kind of introduced me to taking i guess this taking the sport a little bit more professionally in the sense of, you know, he taught me, I didn't know what, what is, what does training look like? You know, like, yeah. what are you supposed to do for training at 16 years old? I knew Especially I loved, 16, like, you racing. Know? Yeah. at 16, I, you know, I loved comp competition and like pushing myself and going fast on my mountain bike. But like, how do you do that for like a body optimized in, in a way, you know? And so he kind of Todd really first showed me, you know, helped me with, what a training plan kind of was going to look like and you know what races to go to and eventually like national championships that year like his mechanic helped me out there as well when I had uh like some issues right before the race um but yeah he's a huge inspiration of mine obviously he's I'd say one of the most successful U.S. mountain bikers in history and he's yeah. just been there done that for so many years and now has a kid and a another job and is re retired from professionally racing but will still absolutely hand most pros their butt 
Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, he's a huge inspiration. Chris Blevins, just a couple years older than me, coming out of Durango is another huge inspiration. And, you know, we were in touch pretty good um, at the World Cups. You know, we get to have a coffee here and there. And so he's a huge inspiration. And, and just having someone just a couple years older than you that you are, like, you can relate to and be so similar, like maturity, but he's also experienced so much more in such a short time is so much, um, like, I can learn so much from that. For sure. And, 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 and having somebody, you know, everybody's competing for spots, especially at that Olympic level, but to have somebody that, you know, you may be going head to head for a spot with, you know, there in your corner to kind of help guide you and give you some feedback. is pretty cool. I think it's pretty humbling as well. Um, uh, it's pretty cool. For sure. And he's so good. It's, it's just amazing how good Chris is at both riding a bike and physically like, yeah. man, on the right day, he can be the best in the world as he's shown and has one rainbow Jersey, you know? So. Yeah, no, for sure. For sure. No, that's awesome, man. Well, Riley, dude, we are stoked to have you come to the apex. Um, we wish you nothing but safe travels and we hope that it has tons of cheeseburgers and, and milkshakes along the way with the boys um, and the good times will be had. 100% is the plan. <laughs> and so I, I'm, I'm stoked to see you out here, man. Uh, hopefully we get to run into each other. Uh, but other than that, guys, if you haven't already, please make sure you go follow Riley on Instagram down in the link below. Also, make sure you hit subscribe to this podcast. And uh, if you haven't already, make sure you go sign up for the Pikes Peak Apex. Everybody's welcome. Um, you know, everybody's welcome to be at this race. Uh, you can even sign up for just one stage at a time. Uh, so whatever kind of fits in your category. But other than that, guys, we will see you next time. And we look forward to seeing you guys at the Apex.